just outside downtown Los Angeles, it's beautiful Dodger Stadium. 23-year-old Joe Ross continues his breakout season facing 19-year-old prize prospect Julio Urias in the series finale. Time for the Nats to get a win in L.A. They've lost four straight on this road trip. The Dodgers are playing well. They've won five in a row. Dusty was a Dodger. Tonight is his bobblehead night. And fortunately for us, he's the manager of our ball club. Nats looking to salvage one tonight. A couple of nights ago, it looked like it was going to be Strasburg and Kershaw. Tonight, it is going to be a couple of really young big league pitchers, 23 and 19 years of age. Yeah, youth has served here tonight at Dodger Stadium. It's going to be fun to watch these guys when you look at what they've done in their career, especially Joe Ross coming off that great start in San Diego. 23 years old, 19 years old, six foot four, six foot two. Six foot two. Urias has been fantastic with the fastball this year. It's 94 miles an hour. Jumps on you. Curveball change up beyond his years. But let's look at Joe Ross's last start Friday in San Diego. Three earned runs, six strikeouts. He's won his last five starts. He's nine and four as a starter in his last 13 starts. So the guy just knows how to win. We know what we're getting from him every fifth day. He's going to go out there and compete tonight. And then for the young left hander of the Dodgers, so difficult to get to the big leagues to begin with. And then there's all the hype. Went fewer than three innings his first time out, but lately pitching much better his last three starts. Yeah, eight strikeouts in five innings last start against the Brewers. His best start to date. The fastball, 94 miles an hour, three plus pitches. The curveball is phenomenal. You got to stay on it if you're a right hander. He'll start it away and bring it back. The changeup, really good. The maturity level off the charts. Really excited to see this young kid pitch here tonight. And obviously, pitching is the name of the game. That's where everything starts in big league ball. But the Nats have found out last couple of ball games. You have to get key hits. You can't strand nine guys in a ball game, and they have been so close to a five and one road trip so far. Really? Yeah. Everybody talking about Yasmani Grandal's three-run home run last night. I think the story was runners left on base, and that's kind of been the story of this road trip with the four losses in a row. They're searching for that big hit. Hopefully, they get it here tonight, but it hasn't come yet. There is thunder in the number eight spot, or if he's batting seven, from Danny Espinosa. He's been on a home run binge, of course. Ten homers since May 26. Second in all of Major League Baseball. And Danny, over his last 13 games, is hitting 326. Now, some more sock from the front part of the lineup would really help.
far away. Beautiful night in Southern California when Dusty Baker, about an hour inland over in Riverside, was growing up. His favorite Dodger was Tommy Davis, the only Dodger ever to win a batting championship. And there's Tommy. So Dusty's the catcher, Tommy's the hurler, and it's going to be right down the middle. Great moment here just a few minutes ago. Davis to Baker. How cool is that to be able to catch a first pitch from the guy you grew up admiring as your favorite player. So here are some game notes for you. The Nats won the first two on the trip, but now they've lost four in a row. They've been on the road more than any team in baseball. Bryce Harper, last 16 games, eight hits on the road trip and batting 311 over that time. Dodgers are playing well. They've won five in a row and 19 of 29 since the 22nd of May. So some old friends getting together in this one, but now it's time to get down to business. Some highlights from the series featuring some great pitching two days ago and some timely hitting ever since not far from the freeways in L.A. Some things are simply impossible to ignore. The strikingly designed Lexus NX Turbo and Hybrid. And by Night Point Systems. They offer the technology you need when you need it. Mass and Regatta earlier today. Dusty, 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 dusty all over the ballpark. It's his bobblehead night. He's got bigger concerns right now. Assistant hitting coach Jacques Jones alongside and here's our weather 77 at game time. We sure have gotten some relief after those triple digits on Monday. Wins not much of a factor. Michael A. Taylor though has been. He now has an 18 game hitting streak as a leadoff guy when he starts. 329 over that time on 25 hits with 12 runs scored and then pretty much the regulars in there behind him. So as Dusty continues to search for that one leadoff guy who's going to take control, Michael A has done as good a job as anybody. First time the Nats see Julio Urias tonight, the 19-year-old rookie. Uh, coming off his best start to date, June 17th, won five scoreless in the Dodgers' 3-2 win over Milwaukee. He struck out eight of those five innings through 85 pitches. So the fastball is sneaky. It's a quick fastball at 93-94. Slider's a developing pitch that he just started throwing last year in double A. Curveball's a good one. Changeup is a good one. So it's a guy you got to get your foot down early and be ready because he'll run it up there quick. Here's Dodgers defense. Thompson, Peterson, Puig, the outfield. Seeger, Turner, left side. Utley Gonzalez, right side. And Asmani Grandal, last night's hero behind the plate. Yeah, he was one for 15 before that three-run homer against Tanner Roark last night. So I guess he was due, wasn't he? Nats hitting 251, eighth in the league, fifth in runs, still first in homers. 
And Arias is going to give us a little, uh, maybe, is that his tribute to Clayton Kershaw? I don't know. Straight up with the hands. Kershaw does that off the stretch. So here's the first one of the night to Taylor, and that's a curveball that drops right in on time at 10 10 well, my, Eastern. Michael Taylor swings at the first pitch a lot, and he gets a first pitch curveball. Interesting. Then he gets the heater that just misses. It's the crew chief tonight, 30th year in the big leagues, Jeff Nelson. Nick Lentz, Corey Blazer, Doug Eddings around the bases. Taylor sees heat, he swings, he's late, and it's one ball, two strikes. So the previous two starters in the series is Mero Petit and Tanner Roark. Tanner's going to win a lot of ball games if he pitches like he did last night. Absolutely. One two pitch. Taylor swinging a miss. And kind of a good example of what we're talking about the quick fastball from Urias. Just 93 but a lot of rotation late late life late jump whatever you want to call it plays a little bit faster than the speed you'll see on the bottom of the screen. Most we'll strikeouts by a Dodger teenager since Mr. Koufax. How about that? On the edge to Jason Worth, three for nine in the series. Jason at 373, his last 13 games. Target in. Ball cutting into him. 0 oh 2. That's the slider. Just started throwing it last year, as I said, in double A. It's considered the lesser of his four pitches. But <laughs> if he starts throwing this first strike, I mean, he's got three plus pitches. If that thing works out, now he's got four. Dodgers, by the way, have surpassed the Nationals. So have the Mets now in team ERA. Dodgers 3.32, third in the league. Nats at 3.34. Right behind him. It's a big curveball that stays outside. Fans were making noise as that ball was halfway to home plate. And Bryce Harper, three for nine with a homer in the series against Dave Roberts. Pitching staff is next. 2 2 with one out. That's what you call fighting one off. Talked about it with Friedrich in San Diego the first time around. You want to see what this guy has. You can watch video all you want. You're standing there. It's a recon mission right now. You're seeing release point rotation trying to pick up pitches for your next at bat. <laughs> Jeff Nelson not biting on the curveball and neither was worth. I don't think it came back. It's one you got to stay on for sure. And the 19 year old walked off the mound on Jason Worth. Interesting. That's way outside. So, first time up last night, Bryce Harper, third hitter of the ball game. Gone. A bolt the other way. Maybe a location mistake by Casimir. Either way, Bryce Harper stayed behind it. Created a lot of backspin, a low liner out of here to make it one nothing Nationals. And he looked good last night. Single up the middle, hit a ground ball hard to second base, hit it hard three times last night. Yeah, 15th homer of the year, just out of the top 10 in the league now. So lefty lefty they play on the shift. It's interesting what the Dodgers do. Chase Sutley is up the middle with Corey Seager. Justin Turner is playing closest to the first baseman their third baseman. Bryce the youngest when he made his debut here. Bryce was 19 years and 196 days old when he played that game. April 28th of 2012 right here. 0 2 with one out. This, I can't wrap my head around that. 
When I was 19, I was trying to find my way around the campus at UC Berkeley. I had no clue how to get the class, let alone play a major league game at Dodger Stadium and do well. It's amazing. Freshman in college is where he should be. Bryce Harper can't do anything with a big curveball. Two outs. A no contact inning so far. Two Ks around the walk. That's the big curveball we're talking about, the roundhouse. It starts behind Bryce. That one a little more sharp than the ones he threw Jason Worth. A little more bite to it. You see Bryce Harper flying open once that hip, shoulder, and head go. He's got no chance of staying on that. That was the old pull swing we were talking about in the open last night. He wasn't thinking the other way right there. Dodgers have stopped Daniel Murphy pretty well here in the series. One for seven with a walk. Gonzalez really slapping that tag straight down. So Murphy's 352, still number one in the league by 20 points over his teammate Wilson Ramos, by 21 over Starling Marte. Nobody else over 324. Front door on the curveball, and it stays in there. Wilson Ramos is up to number five. Ryan Zimmerman dropped a slot to sixth in front of Rendon. I'm talking to some of the Dodger people about Urias. It takes him a while to figure it out. You look at the numbers for Daniel Murphy. Doesn't matter who he's facing, but you'd think that's the case with a 19-year-old, right? The butterflies early in the game, taking time to settle in. That's why I think if you jump him early, you might rattle him. Best ball riding high, 3-0. See Murphy swing 3-0 before, but the first three pitches have been nowhere near. I don't know. See what Dusty decides here if he gives him the green light. Well, he saw pitching his wheelhouse. Look at those numbers on three and one. So they've gone ahead and walked him seven times, but he's done great damage. That one gets the front door. Daniel Murphy gathering information from Jeff Nelson as we speak. He wants to know, okay. Yeah, entire baseball inside the grid. So Mercedes Benz shows you that now on 3 2, Worth will be running. Murphy to center. Well hit. Peterson back edge of the track. That ball had another gear or so on Jock, but he was back there. And the Nats strand their first runner tonight.
wrapping up Dodgers at home 21 and 15 against the East they're 11 and 8 Chuck Peterson 12 days ago he started heating things up so since then a bunch of extra base hits how about nine of those with the doubles and the home runs and Peterson hitting 242 now in this series three for five with a homer and a base on balls. Joe Ross one career start against the Dodgers it was here August 11th last year he was beaten by Ella. You see the arsenal last started through the fastball 48 percent of the time the slider 45 and the changeup at six percent so he threw more off speed than fastballs last start the fastball average 93. Right hander sitting just 194 against Joe Ross who was the seven to five winner at San Diego on the 17th. Yeah elevating that record up to six and four. Four Dodgers in the lineup tonight have seen him. Gonzalez, Peterson, Grandal, and Puig. Chase Utley, modest four-game hitting streak, four for 16. Up there swinging. In the series, the veteran. Now 37 years of age, two of eight with an RBI. said he was going to pull but he didn't on a ball softly hit the Dodgers have their leadoff man aboard Shortstop, number five, Corey Seager. that's defense tonight behind Joe Ross worth Taylor Harper your outfield Espinosa Rendon sometimes on the left side they were on the right side just then Murphy and Zimmerman sometimes on the right side they were on the left side last night and Wilson Ramos behind the plate Michael A. Taylor gets the start in center field tonight he's been raking on this West Coast trip there's Corey Seager who's had a good series three for eight. Base hit in four trips couple of doubles the night before. I think just for fun one night when we set the defense we should have three infielders on the right side of it. Just to do it I mean why well, if not. The, yeah if what Utley's a leadoff guy why not. So that's where they were playing. We'll have to see if the software recognizes defensive shifts before we put our graphics up. One pitch a little bit outside there and it's two and oh. So Seeger having a good month. Just 22 years of age. 337 in 27 games in his big league debut last year. Just had a birthday early in the season end of April. Up the middle. They're two for two. Utley's going to stop at second. Right now the Dodgers are hitting them where they ain't and it's Turner coming up. So a 19 year old starting pitcher for the Dodgers tonight and a 21 year old shortstop. And I think Corey Seager is their all star. Maybe Kenley Jansen. But if you have to have a representative. I think you're looking at a 21 year old all star standing on first base. 285, 15, and 36. Turner hitting 248, 10 home runs. One of those in this series. Sixteen games is hot. Look at the seven home runs. And the heater at ninety four evens things up. Turner in the series, two for eight, Homer. Two RBIs. First inning homer Monday, fourth inning single. He drove in the first two runs of the series.
Well, the slider was the pitch for Joe against the Padres early on this trip. Maybe one of his better sliders of the year. That's why you saw such a high percentage at 45. He had a good feel for it. And after that swing on an elevated fastball, it's likely Justin Turner will get one right here. So Ramos the block and it's 2 2. Dodgers offense 12th in batting average. Ninth in runs eighth in home runs. Stop by Ramos got in front of it didn't try to backhand it with the glove keeps everybody right where they were. A lot of times we've seen Wilson go to the backhand swipe on this but look at him get his body in front he's been working on his blocking with Bob Henley early. Dangerous left handed bat on deck. And with two on a three two pitch nobody out. To center now tailing over toward the gap and Taylor has it back to tag pretty good play by Utley a strong throw on the line he might have had him. Productive out for the Dodgers first and third one down. Well it's interesting because both players are going away from the play Michael A. Taylor's going away from it Chase Utley was going back to the back so his momentum going the same way as Taylor's. And I didn't think Michael Taylor was going to try this, but watch the strong throw from the Nats center fielder to make this a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Pretty good play by Michael Taylor. Good base running by Chase Utley. That ball gets away and the Dodgers lead. And both runners moving up another guy in scoring position. That's a big play you got a guy that's. Susceptible to the double play and right after I said Wilson Ramos did a nice job of blocking that one he did get in front of the next one. And this one a little more important with the runner on third one nothing Dodgers. That league career run number 1,000. I'm wondering what's going on here. Curtain call. What a wild pitch. The runs a run, and the Dodgers have the lead. So only 13 active players have done that. Adrian Gonzalez with a long foul fly ball down the left side. Welcome to those of you who saw the Orioles beat San Diego tonight. Bob F.P. Dan here on Masson. We are in L.A. at Dodger Stadium. Bottom of the first, Utley a hit. Corey Seager a hit. Justin Turner line drive out, advanced to runner. And then Joe Ross uncorked a wild pitch, and L.A. has an early lead. Nats in a shift, Murphy in right field. Joe Ross gets strike two. Top of the first, Nats got a one out walk from Jason Worth. That was it. And that one. 
pitch well hit to right but he got it down toward the end and Harper he'll uncork one here and over to third base is Corey Seager on the seven out. That'll bring in Trace Thompson. Thompson. A couple of good throws from some strong arms in the Nats outfield. If you remember Joe's last start against the Padres on the 17th in San Diego, he gave up a run in the first inning and one in the fifth and one in the sixth, and that was it. So trying to settle into this one and doing the same thing. Trace Thompson. 0 for 4 Monday night, 0 for 1 pitch inning appearance last night. And he steps in with 11 homers, 27 RBIs. Trying to run that fastball back and it stays away. You know, the more I watch baseball at the major league level, it, it almost seems like an epidemic with whoever this year that it's it, it's hard to settle in the first inning. If you're going to get somebody, it's usually in the first. You know, why is that? Well, it takes pitchers time to find the release point, the rhythm, the mechanics. You're facing hitters one, two, and three that are you know ready to rock and roll at the beginning of the game. So if you're not on it coming out of that bullpen, almost like a reliever in a big situation in the first inning. You can give up one, two, three runs early and then settle in, and maybe the damage is done. Tanner Roark last night was ready to rock right from the start. Now you see a lot, right? Yeah, on this road trip, they've been behind a lot. Fortunately, lined right at Daniel Murphy off the bat of Thompson. Couple of hits, a wild pitch, and the Dodgers score first in game three. off top two Major League Baseball released their latest all star game vote tally standings to this point Wilson Ramos currently ranks third among National League catchers in total votes and I talked to Wilson today about what it would mean to him if he did become an all star this year for the first time in his career he said it would mean a great deal largely because of the passing of his grandfather Jesus Campos which we've talked about at a couple points throughout the course of this season after Jesus Campos passed away in late April Wilson went back to Venezuela for his grandfather's funeral and he said to his he talked to his grandmother then and told her that he wanted this to be a special season that was his goal for this year. 
He promised her that it would be special, and he smiled as he told me this. He said making the All-Star Game would be a good first step in that progression. He said, I play with my grandfather in my heart every day, and being an All-Star this year would mean a heck of a lot to me. Great story there, Dan, on our Coons.com sideline report. Over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. Storybook season so far hitting 332. A couple of hits in this series. And cutting that off now with a short throw, Justin Turner. It's the Chicago Cubs versus the American League. First baseman number 11. Joanna Cespedes. A little bit of an irritant in his side today. He and Noah Syndergaard left a ball game. The Mets won. It's all about the Cubs on the interior. And until Yadier Molina hangs it up someday, pretty much the incumbent behind the plate every year. Bryson Wright. Here's Zimmerman. And when I said Dodger All Stars, I left some guy named Clayton Kershaw. Off. My bad. I'm pretty sure he might. There's a slim chance. I think he'll be pitching in the early innings. Yeah, slim chance he might make it. That guy right there. Yeah, starting the All Star game is a lot different than it used to be. Most guys go one inning now, maybe two. There was a time when the All Star starters would almost always go three innings. That's been a while, though. Well, if you're Terry Collins, you go with Kershaw or Jake Arrieta or Steven Strasburg or. I'm going with the unorthodox lefty first. Jose Fernandez. There's a good pitch in the National League. How many aces are there in the American League? Compared to the National League. Chris Sale. Yeah, he's the obvious guy. Is King Felix. Chris still? Tillman has yeah. 10 wins over there for the Orioles. Just saying that. Yeah, the it's, not, it's not the same. The A-listers are in the National League. Yeah, Jordan Max. Zimmerman, nine wins. There's that curveball in there. I mean, former Nats Marco Estrada and Doug Fister are in the top 10 in ERA over there. 3 2, not to take anything at all away from them. Got a chance to drop, and it will get beyond the reach of Yasiel Puig. Ryan Zimmerman will take it, his second hit of the series in nine at bats. There goes a no hitter. Ryan Zimmer with a little inside out swing gets his hands inside the ball. Good things happen. Pretty good effort here by Puig. I thought this was dropping for sure. He made it close. Anthony Rendon is next. Fastball in there. Two for eight in RBI here in LA. 287 last 38 games. 21 runs, 21 RBIs. And there's the number eight guy with pop we've been talking about. Two for three last night, Danny. Good catch, Bryce. If you're not careful, I mean, 13 home runs, Bryce with 15. Murphy with 12, Wilson 11. Zim has 10. Yeah, Danny already equaling last year's total. Jason Worth with 10. A lot of double digit homer guys. Throws that one away. Not much Grandal could do. That was a lively pitch deflecting off him. And now Zimmerman to scoring position, one out. This one just a little bit low. And 
Like you said, a little ricochet piece gets far enough away. Ryan was going no matter what. It was just a luxury that the ball kicked that far. As soon as he saw it hit the dirt, he was taken off. He's always looking for that. Rendon looking to tie the game. Oh, crossed him up. Yeah, 94 away, and Rondal will visit. He turned his glove over to catch the slider, and it was a fastball away, and he had to go emergency just to get his glove on it. I wonder if Grandal forgot what he gave, because it looked like Urias was saying, isn't that what you gave me? Fourth full count on seven hitters. Yeah, 20 pitches first inning. About to throw his 33rd here. And a two hopper to the right side for Chase Utley. Hustling all the way, Rendon out by a step. And here's Danny Espinosa who went deep last night. I told him before the game yesterday that he lost the game against Kershaw. I said it was all your fault. You hit that line drive to left. If you hit it higher, your team would have won. So you lost the game. We both had a laugh. And then last night, he hit one a little bit higher. His 13th home run of the year. Danny Espinosa strong like bull. His first full season in the big leagues, 2011, he had 21 home runs. Drove in 66. Next year, he went 17 and 55. In this series, two for six, a walk. That breaking ball gets away. Zimmerman about 15 feet down the line. Inside the numbers with Jeep, last 24 games. Batting average right about 260 now, at least in that time, 21 hits. Because of the home runs and some extra base hits, the on base percentage plus slugging it skyrocketed. Yeah, if he can get some knocks in between taters and he hits 260, he's on pace hit about 25 or 30 home runs with the way he plays shortstop, he's going to get paid. It's just that getting knocks in between the home runs thing, and he's getting there. Career batting average 230 coming into this season. So middle infielders love swinging on Masson. 1 1, two outs. So this is game number 72. He's got 13 home runs. Do the math. He keeps his current pace, he has a chance to hit 30. Out of the eighth slot, that, that that's the part you've really got to pay attention to. And Denny appearing in 70 of the Nats' first 72 games. You have a pitcher hitting behind you every night. You see nothing to hit. He saw something to hit, and there it goes. Top of the wall, and it appears to stay in unless it hit back over the original wall to the bleachers and Danny Espinosa at least ties the game and it appears that a couple more inches it would have hit the top of the wall and ricocheted in but it stays in the ballpark it appears. Oh that's just bad luck it hit the crease in the padding and stayed in if it hits a half an inch higher it skids out of the ballpark. They're going to look at it though. Well, at least RBI number 30. This is a crew chief review. Looked like it stayed in. There's nothing tricky back there that it could have hit and came back. It's the fence. There's about six feet of space between the stands, the bleachers and left. And 
There's really nothing to this, I don't believe. I mean, it hit kind of on the top of the rail. Watch this, it hits on the top of the rail, above the crease just a little bit. And still stays in, how'd that happen? I don't know, I think the reason it stayed in, it bounced straight up instead of that little skid you talked about that would have taken it out of here. It was at such a low trajectory though, that's amazing that that ball stayed in. A fly ball, home run, I could see that happening. But that was a low laser beam. Probably about 100 to 607 miles an hour. Game is tied. Joe Ross is next. Boom. I'll tell you what, they're going to stop pitching to him hitting eighth. It's going to be the Bryce Harper treatment. He keeps this up. And I don't know how in the world they stayed in the ballpark. Good effort by Trace Thompson, by yeah. the way. And I think he was surprised to look up and see it still in. Joe Ross this year, six base hits. In his career, nine, and still hunting that first RBI. There's Danny Espinosa's sixth double of the year. And he's doing damage right handed. He's seen a lot of lefties on this road trip. And maybe the fact that Joe Ross can hit is why they pitched to Danny, but if you're Dave Roberts, you can't trust a 19 year old to try to pitch around somebody. That's a talent that's learned as you go along in the big leagues. You know, how to throw balls, how to make a guy swing at your pitch. Yeah. That's really advanced stuff. And I know if I'm a manager, I'm not trusting a young kid to try to do that. Yeah, first base was open there. One on one to Joe. No fielders within. 35 feet of Danny Espinosa. Good job to lay off the curveball, two and one. I used to have long talks with Steve McCaddy about that, the, the eighth hitter. In, in his philosophy, I believe, if I'm remembering right, was if you want to walk him that bad, stand up and walk him. But never trust a pitcher, especially a younger pitcher, to bounce stuff, or because inevitably they'll throw something that's hittable. And next thing you know, everyone's upset in the dugout. Why'd you throw that? Well, look at Joe Ross tailing away from Puig. The Nats are on top. First career RBI, and he's into second base. Three hits in the inning, and the numbers eight and nine guys both have doubles. Two one, Washington. Number three, Michael Taylor. Joe Ross can hit. Nice piece of hitting right here by the Nats pitcher, staying on that backdoor slider, it looked like. And Puig, who was cheating up, couldn't create an angle to get to that ball. It was hit too hard. Joe Ross, who can fly in with a stand up double and an RBI. Nicely done. Michael A. Taylor takes one low. Top of the order now. That was an impressive swing. We had no chance to catch it. It was hit so well. Slicing two. Big swing by Michael A. Taylor. Struck out first time swing. Nissan will track one. A first pitch curveball first time up. Now he gets a heater right there. Second pitch.
Taylor had six hits in the San Diego series with that four hit day on Sunday. And a fastball as Urias took him up out of the strike zone. But the Nets pick up a couple of runs. Zimmerman, Espinosa, Ross hitting safely. Baker 242 home runs 1013 RBIs you might be surprised to know that Davey Lopes in his career hit 155 home runs and drove in over 600 he wasn't some light hitting middle infielder they both could drive the ball and tremendous teammates with a lot of pop you remember I said how this infield used to be terrible Did you see that last hop to Davey Lopes but he had the soft hands on a nasty hop had some pop could steal bases. That was such a good ball club. As Dodger teammates for six years, Jeep takes us inside the numbers. Winning percentage of 564. Seven postseason series, including three World Series, three pennants for the Dodgers. And in 81, they got the Yankees. Here's one of Davies' gold gloves. Tell you what, growing up a Giants fan, I couldn't stand those guys. Now we absolutely respect everything they accomplished in their career. Davey won that gold glove in 78. He made four all star teams. And we're going to the bottom of the second. And uh, we all look forward to a day in Washington when we can have such tradition to call back at times. Everybody has such a long long jump on the Nats in terms of history and postseason and World Series appearances and great players it'll happen but boy these things take a while and when you look at the video of Bryce Harper playing someday in the tradition you're talking about will it be blurry <laughs> well that's the fault of the old videotape right? machines look at the difference I mean you know that's the old analog stuff they don't store like digital does now so Bryce will look crystal clear 100 years from now when we talk about his 1,015 career home runs. <laughs> so to the bottom of the second, Jock Peterson leads off. Nets, by the way, have made the rookie Urias throw 45 pitches in the first two innings. Ninety six the extra fastball I don't know that he's hit ninety six this year. In there. 
Scott Peterson tossing his bat. And then Jeff Pitcher, Nelson tossing yes, strike three. Now. I'll tell you what, the biggest. Jack Peterson trying to stay in this game right now. Still chirping back and forth, Jeff Nelson. I thought the biggest part of last night's game was the 3-2 pitch to Jock Peterson. It was a changeup from Tanner Roark. I thought it was strike three. Doug Eddings thought it was ball four. And Peterson ran out just like he did right there. Maybe bought the call because he flipped his bat and ran. Some umpires buy that. Some umpires will call you out for doing that. But he ran out the same way there. And that one was strike three. Yeah, and that was the decisive inning. Then Puig's base hit just off Espinosa's glove. And you could almost sense something bad coming. And it was the Osmani Grandal straight away center field home run. The ball is up in the air and out of play. Catch. Parents of kids join Steven Strasburg and visit a D.C. public library to sign up for the summer reading program or Nationals tickets and prizes just by reading books. Visit nationals.com slash summer reading for more information. One and two to Grundahl. Who's 0 for 1 career against Joe with two walks. This one playable. Anthony Rendon into foul ground left side. First time Anthony Rendon has had a ball hit to him in this series. Had a couple of throws from the outfield come his way, but nothing off the bats. So the quiet corner, but who knows? You say that he's going to get one right I, here. That's Mark. exactly what I'm thinking. As soon as you say that, here comes Puig. Basketball away. Yasiel Puig. Two for three career against Ross in that game last year. A homer, five RBIs. Five of the, well, all five of the RBIs in that game. Only the seventh time he's hit eighth. He's four for 11, 364 average in that spot. And I was writing on my lineup card tonight. I was like, Yasio Puig is hitting eighth. Wow. Dave Roberts maybe trying to ease him back into it. One and two. Joe Ross has found his command here. Couple of hard hit line drives for outs in the first inning. Inside the numbers brought to you by PNC. So lowest opponents average versus right handed batters since June 1st of last year. Max of course threw a no hitter 19 days after that. And Joe Ross coming into his own since that time. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Best slider of the night for Joe Ross. A 1 2 3 with bookend strikeouts on Peterson and Puig. Worth Harper and Murphy coming up.
Ender for the Dodgers, Julio Urias is being called the next Fernando Valenzuela. Dusty was asked about that earlier today and in not so many words said, hey, maybe let's pump the brakes on the lofty comparisons to a large extent. Dusty said, we don't know if he's one of the best yet. We do know that he's much typed and he's got some ability. But Dusty said, everybody is the next somebody. He said, I was the next Hank Aaron. You saw what happens there, a little self-deprecation from Dusty. He also added Bobby Bonds was the next Willie Mays. Bobby Mercer was the next Mickey Mantle. You don't know what young players are going to become. I asked him whether he viewed this as a matchup of two of the best young starting pitchers in the game. He said the way I look at it is their youngster is facing one of the best in the league in our youngster. So a lot left to go for Urias to maybe reach that level. A lot of talent here though for this left hander. Yeah well said Dan we are so so quick in this game to put labels on guys. I mean talk to us in five years and then maybe. Five years years after that. Well Fernando won his first eight starts in 1981. Fernando Mania. And he went nine innings in all eight starts. They were complete games. <laughs> so maybe to... that's what Dusty Baker's talking about. And I'm looking right now, and he gave up three, to four total runs in those eight starts. One in one start, one in another, and two in the eighth. So yeah. breaks pumped. Hold your horses. Over two million vehicles sold and counting. Coons.com, Dan with our sideline report. Jason Worth based on balls first time two and one here. And now that curveball starting to come back a little better. First two innings by the way for Urias 45 pitches 27 strikes. He had 10 K's 10 K's 11 and 11. And four of those eight starts. He had charisma as you talked about last night he could hit. But a lot of things to help the Dodgers win games. But eight complete games out of the shoot? Come on. That's never going to happen again. Agents will be suing ball clubs <laughs> before that'll happen. So, yeah. And he was 19. Fernando. The eyes, you remember the eyes of the windup looking up at the sky? That was the thing we always used to try to copy in wiffle ball. The delivery of Fernando, looking up at the sky and then finding the target. Who teaches that? That's just something you can't teach. He owned this town. Imagine. Do you have pitch counts on some of those games? Yeah. Hold I'd on. be curious about that. I got them all right here. Three and two to Worth leading off the third. Hits it hard, base hit, past the diving Justin Turner. And now the Nats, four hits in the last six batters. The 34, Bryce Harper. Nice job staying on that cut fastball slider thing. Down and in, Jason Worth has been locked in. So walk his first time up, base hit here in the third. Harper struck out swinging first time. As we mentioned first time up very unusual the Dodgers on the shift. That's Justin Turner their third baseman. Who's in that rank pull position and then Utley and Seeger, the regular second baseman shortstop combo up the middle. Big slow curveball and Bryce puts it on the ground but it spins foul. Oh and two. Remember Justin Turner played second base for the Mets so it's not that big a deal. In my mind, if it was an everyday third baseman, say a, a, a David Wright, a Nolan Arenado, and you, you threw him over there, a guy that's been playing that his whole career, that'd probably be a little bit shocking. But he was a utility player for the Mets. He played all over. He's made three errors this year. Anthony Rendon, three. And uh, one or two of those questionable calls, as we've noted before. I'm seeing no pitch count. 
I'm going to guess he threw 130 a couple times in that yeah, streak. Yeah, I, I want to see it. I don't know if they kept track back then. Yeah. Oh, and two to the hitter. A check of worth. Bryce in the series, three for ten. Ooh. Jeff Nelson as he started to stand up thought the right arm might come up Mercedes Benz will track it well it it's hit a good the, 2 pitch it hit the spot but that's where Rondell was setting off the plate that would you can't set up off the plate and expect to get a strike it's off it again that's not a strike. Four K's Harper twice. Well, same pitch he struck out on first time. He goes to that big curveball again, and you know the pitch going one way and Bryce going the other. So Taylor and Harper are the four strikeout victims. That curveball up in the zone, but a strike to Murphy. I don't think Daniel agreed with that. He's saying, is that the top of the strike zone, or is it something I need to protect with two wow. strikes because that's not even close? He probably said it way more polite than I just did, though. Murphy hit the ball well. Deep center to Jock Peterson first time up. So a really high strike and then a low one with the heater and Murphy. Pretty much in disbelief. Two outs. Jeff Nelson is hearing it from both sides tonight. He literally heard it from Jock Peterson. You probably heard it at home too. Wow. And neither one of those were strikes to Daniel Murphy. He's a guy that knows the strike zone better than most hitters. So the count two and one on. Oh, wait a minute. Murphy's done. Here's Ramos. Wow. Yasmani's going to keep setting up out there. Well, but why, sure. why wouldn't you sit up on the plate? We don't yeah. like to chirp, chirp about umpires, but that was blatant. And also, if you want to really get into the game within the game, it's the leading hitter in the league against a 19 year old. Usually, the borderline calls go your way in that case. That is not Fernando out there. Or Kershaw. Wilson Ramos. Rolled over a grounder to Justin Turner first time over at third. And Murph still pacing in the dugout. Talking on his way back and forth. Wilson made the commitment and then that thing disappeared. Worth a pretty short lead. Ramos to right. Puig hesitated a moment, then able to come in and grab it. So after the Worth base hit, three down, 
Murphy still can't believe he struck out. Honestly, neither can we. Beautiful night in L.A. Nets on top by one. First 20,000 fans get the figurine featuring Jason Worth and Magnus. Both can be yours. Look at that together. It's not a bobblehead, it's a figurine. For tickets, visit nationals.com. So, from one tall guy to another, Clay Thompson in the house tonight. Nice. One of the Splash Brothers. 2015 NBA champion. First time the Warriors had won it since 1975 when Rick Barry was there. From Los Angeles, obviously, watching his brother. Son of Michael Thompson. What else do you want to know? Yeah. And there was another brother, Mike Kell, who was very, very good. I'm calling he didn't watch the parade today from Cleveland. <laughs> the coronation? The re coronation? One ball, one strike. Hey, I, I tell you, LeBron James willed his team to that championship, in my opinion. Well, I'm, I'm a Warriors fan. I thought it I was know. pretty cool that they won 50, the first time in 52 years of championship in Cleveland. I was watching them today, and I was happy for that city. They've had enough parades in San Francisco recently. And their baseball team, not bad. One again today. They're 19 over 500. Giants 46 and 27. Six games, games up on these Dodgers and top of the order. Here's Chase up. I mean, does that make me not a fan because I can appreciate the city? I mean, the Giants won a World Series in 2010 for the first time in 52 years. That's a long time. That's a huge drought for a city to go through without a championship in sports. I thought it was great. This ball, a long, long run for Jason Worth. Looking into the twilight, he's got it. I think, and I, and I totally agree with you, I think that makes you a true fan of the sport and of your team. I mean, if you have to hate the team that beat your team, whatever, but you got to respect what Cleveland did. Yeah, maybe it's the old athlete in me recognizing how hard it is to do what they did, right? right absolutely. I hope we haven't lost sportsmanship. You know, you play your heart out, try to beat the other guy into the ground, then you shake hands and walk away. One's the champ, one's not. Seeger base it up the middle first time. Into left center. Taylor back. Jumping. Home run. Corey Seager, 16th of the year. And he is now 5 for 10 in this series. This just in, he's really good. 
such a good inside out swing opposite field approach. We've seen a few doubles to left center now, his 16th home run to center ish. Really good swing, really good looking young player. I think call to Justin Turner. I think the game's in really good shape, don't you, with the young superstars? And we're kind of seeing it every year. And that's a that's a family with three professional baseball players in it. Turner line drive to center first time. And Joe Ross with a good slider had him lunging. So the Dodgers have hit 83 home runs this year. Eighth in the league. And the young guys leading the way Seeger 16. Peterson 13. Trace Thompson 11. Yasiel Puig and Adrian Gonzalez and Puig's been beat up a bit have combined for 11. Turner one of the grizzled veterans he's in double digits. Overmatched by Joe Ross sliders in that at bat. So the Dodgers get their first hit since Seager in the first. And it's a Corey Seager solo in the third to tie things up. Back to the second inning, Danny Espinosa with a laser that just stays at the ballpark. I don't know how. You'll have to ask Phil Knight, the science guy. I thought that should have been a home run. They look at it, double. And then Joe Ross helping himself out, a little slicer down the right field line that we can't track down. That would score Danny Espinosa. So a couple of runs in the second inning. For your Geico highlights. Nats with five doubles last night. That was a season high. They have two already here tonight. Yeah, Joe hit that ball about 300 the opposite way, right down the line. Ryan Zimmerman started that inning with a flare to right center that fell right in front of Yasiel Puig. Curveball, yes. Next pitch will be Urias. 65th of the night. Target in. And this ball flirting with the right field line and twisting foul. Uncatchable.
They want to jam him again. Zimmerman turns on it. Great stop, Seeger. And Ryan Zimmerman is two for two. Kids playing some ball over there and with the bat. Well, if he didn't slide so far in this, he might have had a chance to get Ryan. Ryan will take the base hit, obviously, but watch how far Seeger goes on the grass before he could get up. That was the difference. Nice play by Corey Seeger. Another base hit for Ryan Zimmerman, who's two for two. Nicely done. Yeah, Ryan needs a three or four hit night to jump start things again. Halfway there. Here comes Rendon. Ground ball to the right side. First time up. I'll tell you what, the way I see it, Ryan is leading the world in lining out hard. We have that hard hit percentage. He was in the top eight in baseball. That was a couple weeks back. Mm -hmm. Might have changed. So an infield single, a blooper, he'll take it. He deserves it. More of those coming. 2 0. Oh. Deserves might be a strong word, but you know what I mean. I don't think anybody deserves hits. <laughs> yeah, it's not an entitlement program. <laughs> but you hit the ball hard, you're supposed to get hits. You, des you deserve a hit. Yeah. 3 0. Oh. You're owed a hit? What's the word I'm looking for? Help me out. I'm lost. You what? got what you worked for. Okay. How's that? Yeah. A lot of words. It's not what I was thinking of, but I'll take it. <laughs> There's one word to describe hitting. You got what you worked for. <laughs> That's not always true either. I know. Sit in that tunnel for that game, man. cage for hours. Buckets and buckets of balls off the tee and crickets. Anthony Rendon both hits in this series the other way. RBI single Monday night. Double first time up last evening. They got Zimmerman picked off. One three six. Well, he thought he had a read on Arias. Obviously, he didn't. And how many times have you seen Ryan Zimmerman, who I think is the best base runner on the team, get picked off? He's only been caught stealing 15 times in his entire career. Now he doesn't steal a lot. 38 career. The ball a little harder than Puig thought it was. And Anthony Rendon a fly ball to right two down just like that with Danny Espinosa coming up. This should be called taters for tots or Washington D.C. Lexus Great. dealers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Health System for every home run an ads player hits this year. So keep them coming. It's for a wonderful cause. Lexus. The pursuit of perfection. Danny Espinosa, an inch or two away from a home run. Thanks to Joe Ross, it didn't cost the Nats a run when his ball didn't leave because Ross went ahead and drove him in. Danny now seven RBIs in his last 14 games and getting a lot of reps from this side of the plate. Because the Nats have faced four left handed starters in a row. Left side chopper, Justin Turner. Lead off single. Inning came to an end in a hurry. 4 5 6 coming up for LA.
by the RAV4 Hybrid All-Wheel Drive. Unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com. Tonight. Two to two as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Dodger Stadium. Nats trying to get away with a W. The Peanuts are back at the Fitz after the All-Star break from Monday, June 27th to Wednesday, June 29th. All kinds of good stuff going on. Daycare day, you can just drop your kids off and leave them forever. To join the party at the Fitz call, 703-590-2311 or visit PotomacNationals.com. Young guy that was playing for them last year, Isaac Ballou, hit a grand slam and drove in seven runs tonight for Harrisburg. One of the rising young stars in our organization. Well done, Isaac. High fly ball. Carrying to near the track, and Jason Worth has it. Adrian Gonzalez, a little bit beyond twilight time here now. Sky pretty dark. Joe Ross averaging just over 15 pitches per inning. Facing Trace Thompson now and Jock Peterson. Had a nine pitch third despite that homer by Corey Seager. So he's throwing strikes and the Dodgers are on the attack. Waiting for that one Anthony Rendon. That came springing up with momentum toward first on that throw. I'll tell you what, I watched Clay Thompson that whole at bat. I did not watch Trace, and he was grinding that whole time his brother was up there. He watched him run to first, he kind of covered his face when the ball went to third. So it was interesting for me to watch the sibling who's an NBA star watch the other one who's becoming an MLB star. Yeah. I think Trace was doing a little grinding Sunday afternoon too. Yeah, he was nervous watching his brother hit. That was pretty cool. cool. Here's Jock Peterson called that on strikes first time. An impressive bat toss for the walk, but Jeff Nelson called him back. A disappearing would be fastball. A great change at 87. Bolts the heater to the outside edge. Peterson, a lot of home runs as a rookie last year, 26. Said that pitch is off. And then Jeff Nelson said something back, and he said, yeah, it was. Now you called it earlier, unhappy hitters on both teams. I would say Peterson is the most unhappy so far tonight. He let Jeff Nelson know. Here's Nissan with the at bat. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Challenge fastball, and Joe really jammed him. Peterson able to follow it straight back. Another payoff pitch. <laughs> 
Six pitches first time. And here comes number eight. Just missed inside. Bat toss successful that time around. He's aboard with two down. Well, he flips his bat and gets out of the box on three two pitches quicker than anybody. I thought this was a good pitch. Maybe the argument helped last time, but he clearly thought it was a ball. Not the same pitch, but the same location as Tanner Roark's changeup last night in that dreaded bottom of the eighth inning. Set right field corner by Yasmani Grandal. Harper gets to it. One hop throw to second, first and third. Inning a tough to close here for Joe Ross with Puig coming up. Piece in. I'm sitting here thinking. That's why I wasn't talking. I, I mean, if you pitch to Puig carefully, I guess here, you don't want to put another run in scoring position. There's nobody up in the Dodger bullpen, so it, it would be Uria sitting here. He's on an 85 to 90 pitch count. He's got one more start after this, and they're going to put him in the bullpen or send him down. They haven't decided yet, so I guess it'd be risky putting another runner in scoring position. 74 pitches right now, so he's probably got one more left. Look out. Well, almost got his jersey. Ross struck out Puig first time swinging. And remember how Chase Utley scored and does that affect Joe Ross and throwing the slider in the dirt here to Puig which is the pitch you really want to throw this guy. Yeah. And sometimes managers will go ahead and walk a guy after it goes to two and oh. A base open it's not first. And Puig helps out by swinging at what would have been ball three. Well, this is the hole where it's hard to hit eighth deal. Do I expand my zone and try to drive in this run, or do I take my walk? And I'm just going to guess that Puig gets a couple more of those. Well, there's an inside target, which usually means heater. And he got it out over the plate. Puig fouls it. Two two slider got it Dodgers strand a couple three on the night pretty good battle right here two young pitchers going at it two two after four.
there against Julio Urias. I mean, he's done it all at the plate, on the mound, the double to score Danny Espinosa's first career RBI. I didn't see if they got the baseball. I don't even know if you get the ball in your first career RBI. Not sure about that one. But the slider's been crisp along with a mid to upper 90s fastball from Joe Ross tonight. A big strikeout of Yasiel Puig right there to keep it a 2-2 ball game. Joe Ross got it going on. Looking for a multi-hit game here. So Joe has seven hits in 29 at-bats this year. Most on the staff. Scherzer five, Strasburg five. Geo three, Tanner Roark. Finally checking in with a couple of knocks and Yusmero Petit has one. I've been impressed with Julio Urias tonight. Dave Roberts talking about how he's improved every start. He's learned from the times when he's been knocked around. You remember his debut just two and two thirds against the Mets and kind of got knocked around and there's been some shaky ones in there. He's faced some good lineups on the road. The Mets the Giants. Now he's facing the Nats here tonight but getting better every start is exactly what the skipper is looking for from a 19 year old. Taylor jammed a bit and that is playable and then off the glove of Utley did Gonzalez grab it in the air. That's not the first time we've seen that happen this year. A 4 3 foul pop up. I thought that bounced. Obviously, I'm wrong. You're going to see this on all the highlight reels. Hit him in the leg. Are you kidding me? I did not see that live. Are you kidding me? That's a catch. Chase Utley says here, Adrian, pay attention. I'm going to tip it to you and look at the concentration by Adrian Gonzalez. That's a catch of the year. Remember the tip drill in high school football? If you're a defensive back, that's taking it to a whole new level. Top of the order, Taylor. Shows bunt. Turner charging from third ball one. That's if you're scoring at home four to three 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 three. <laughs> foul. With, well, yeah with an F at the end for foul. There's that big curveball dropping in. I've never seen anything like that. I'm, st I'm still blown away by what I just saw. Two and one to Taylor. It just hit him in the leg. Utley just went. High Leicester flipped it into Adrian Gonzalez's leg, and he goes, Oh, there's a ball there. I'm going to try to catch it. Career high 86 pitches. I believe it was last time out. No, he threw 85 last time against the Brewers. Yeah, 86 two times before that. Home against the Rockies at San Francisco. Five and a third's the longest he's pitching. That was the game at AT&T Park. A 2-1 loss. Kind of on an innings, not limit, but you know, they're paying close attention to the youngster. They don't want to stretch him out too far. Swing and a foul tip, two outs. He has struck out Michael A. Taylor three times. Number six on the night.
Jason a walk a base hit. in the series four for ten on base five times waiting for a two one spots the curveball and takes it. I just can't get used to a pitcher with a single digit number it just trips me out. I think Mike Leake had number Mike eight. Leak, huh? Yeah number eight this year and then seven it just doesn't look right. Worth drives one to right center. Puig going back. It is going to one hop the wall. Picked up by Jock Peterson. And the Nats continue with doubles. Third one tonight, and Worth has a perfect night on base three times. 275th career double. That's right, 275. And Jason Worth takes a fastball in. I think he thought he got him. I did too initially, and then. The temperatures drop it's cooling off and it's turning into Dodger Stadium again with the heat the first couple of days the ball's been jumping but it's a cool night. And another great swing from Jason Worth. Stay hot. Jason Worth. Well I was hoping to see maybe one more Urias Harper matchup here. Didn't want him to get out of here unscathed in the fifth. So a conference on the mound. Well based on the first two if you're Bryce Harper it's been curve balls away and if you think about keeping that front side closed and driving a ball through Corey Seager's chest that's the game plan take pull out of the equation if he throws you three on the inner half tip your cap go get your glove and play some defense other than that think about driving the ball toward that LG sign in left center field. Harper two swinging strikeouts. Go ahead run at second here in the fifth. Yeah guess what a hook. Shaking his head like all right. Lewis Coleman. Scoreless eighth inning here last night gave up a couple of hits. He was on the mound when Ramos was thrown out at the plate. Harper another curveball. This one's right off the end of the bat. It's in play. And as Money Grandal just pulled up, he was much closer to the ball than Turner was. And Bryce Harper lives for at least another pitch. Adrian Gonzalez is like, do you guys need me to come over there? Because that's the exact opposite of what I just did down the right field line. That is a 180 from what Chase and I just did. And now the at bat continues for Bryce Harper. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's a catcher's ball there. Sometimes fans yell, I got it, I got it, I got it. I've seen guys pull off because of a fan saying something before. Who knows? Well, Bryce trying to make it hurt. Fans on both sides of the diamond couldn't see the Grandal caught that about a foot and a half outside. Pitch number 93 coming. Not happening lately for Bryce with two strikes, 205 average. And that's off the end of the bat. Justin Turner tracking it. And Urias will get through five. He'll throw a lot of pitches. 
but giving up just two runs on six hits. In Los Angeles, you can start your Independence Day weekend with post-game Freedom Fireworks at Nats Park. It's presented by Associated Builders and Contractors. 6.05 start. Mark that down. 6.05 Nats Reds on Friday, July 1st. Stick around for silent military drill team performance. D.C.'s first big fireworks show of the season. Visit nationals.com slash tickets. Always the best weekend of the year in the 4th of July game. Besides opening day is my favorite day of the year in Nets Park. Here's Will Venable. He'll hit for Urias here, bottom of the fifth. So Julio went five innings, two runs, six hits, a walk, six strikeouts. A wild pitch, picked off a batter. 94 pitches, 57 strikes. Venable faces Ross for the first time. That's Joe's 65th pitch. I think I saw the 4th of July hats online the other day. The back half is red. The front half is kind of a lighter red, a mesh, if you will, with white stars everywhere and a curly W in the middle, and the bills are red. They're very loud. It'll be an eye opener at yeah. 11 a.m. Yeah. We'll wake you up. Cup of coffee hat. Joe breaks off a big hook right there, and it's one ball, two strikes. Will Venables laughing as he gets in the batter's box. Seen a lot of that tonight. Danny Espinosa just a little bit back to grab it. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances. With confidence, it's all brought to you by PNC Bank. For the achiever in you. So, how about some MVP talk? Carolina League Potomac took on the California League and our guy Andrew Stevenson the MVP Max Schrock as the Sally League all star game took place and he was the MVP. So how about an outfielder and a shortstop taking home a little hardware. Well done gentlemen. Those guys need a raise. Twenty two and twenty one years of age respectively. Bonuses in their minor league contracts for all star game MVPs. Do they get a car for it like they do in the regular one? At least you get something. They get still... one ride to the ballpark free. These guys don't make nothing. They need some. They need some incentives. Call them up, both of them. One one. Chase Utley base it up the middle. Scored on a wild pitch. One out later in the first. Fly ball to Worth in the third. Joe got a strike call against Venable with a similar pitch. Yeah. 
So third most among active players, Chase Utley's stats career against Washington came into this series with 18 homers, 93 RBIs. He's added one to the ladder total, and it's out of play three and two. There's Casey Fien. Breaking ball, hit the center. Not that hard. So Taylor has to come in and slide to make a fine play. Two down. It took Michael A. Taylor a second to realize that it wasn't hit that hard, so he froze. For a second, this will give you a good look, top of your screen. Then realizes that it's hit softly and comes flying in for the sliding grab. So good makeup speed, if you will, by Michael A. Taylor. Nice play. Low to Corey Seeger, two for two tonight. Base it up the middle in the first. Home run, left center in the third. It's on a seven game hitting streak now. 11 for his last 27. So in the series, five out of 10, and he's made contact nine times. Target in one two. No swing says Doug Eddings. Good pitch. Here's the entire bet from Mercedes. Wow, Curry Seeger is unstoppable right now. Taylor over to cut it. He's three for three, and in the series, six for 11. I mean, you'd think he'd walk up to the plate to Hollywood Nights. I mean, it'd be the obvious walk up song for a kid hitting almost 300 with 16 home runs, last name Seeger. But another base hit for the 21 year old shortstop. He's unstoppable, like you said. Turner 0 for 2, line drive to center, swinging strikeout. In the air to right, it'll back up Bryce Harper, who's waiting for it. Dodgers have stranded four, so have the Nats. Into the sixth, and some big bats coming up.
50 lease at 299 a month. That's Mercedes Benz of Arlington. Two to two as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Jason Worth locked in. Danny Espinosa just missed a home run, or this would be three to two. Joe Ross with his first career RBI. And Daniel Murphy's had an interesting night, I guess you could say. If you go back to the third inning and you watch the whole at bat, that was up. Strike one. Foul ball, strike two. That pitch, strike three. So interesting. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Two and one. He's probably still thinking about it. Let's we'll see what these two talk about this time up. 32 year old Casey Fiend, the Nets have seen him this year, but playing for a different ball club in a different league. The Twins signed him and then waived him, and the Dodgers signed him May 7th. So with Minnesota, 14 appearances in a 7.90 ERA. Now the Dodgers, 10 games, 3.27. Daniel Murphy is 0 for 2 against him. Put that breaking ball right in on Daniel's hands. Gonzalez, a turnaround, nice throw right on target to KC Phoenix. Good morning to all of you back home. Good While many of you are heading for work in the morning, the Nats will just be arriving in Milwaukee. Day off tomorrow, then a three game set with the Brewers tomorrow night. Actually, Friday night starting. Late afternoon game on Saturday. Sunday afternoon, then finally, finally back home. Ramos facing Casey Fiend for the first time. Wilson in the number five hole tonight. Ground ball to third, fly ball to right. You see the cutter from Fiend, three pitch guy. He has a slider to go with his fastball cutter. Fastball average is 93. Nets face Casey Fiend twice in that series. Taylor and Zimmerman hits against him. So the Nets still playing the most road games in all of baseball. And on the road, 23 and 17 coming in. So brought to you by Jeep. The rubber's been hitting the road a lot this year for the Nets. 58 of their 98 home runs. One and two to Ramos and a fastball up that he can't catch up. Casey Bean with 95. And here's Dan with an offensive note. Bob, prior to yesterday's game, Dusty Baker was asked what he'd like to see his team improve upon as we get deeper into the season. His answer was timely clutch RBI hitting. And unfortunately for Dusty, it was a little prophetic because his team went one for 10 with runners in scoring position last night. So how do you improve with runners in scoring position? Dusty wants his team to be more aggressive. He said, don't let yourself get behind in the count. Give yourself a chance to strike out. He wants his guys going up there ready to hack in those situations. Breaking ball to Zimmerman in there. Ryan two for two tonight. As mentioned, a base hit against Casey Fien Dusty. in the Minnesota series. Dusty yelling at Jeff Nelson that that pitch was up. That's box worth a walk in the first Zimmerman Espinosa Ross all hits in the second to score two runs worth single third double fifth and another Ryan Zimmerman base hit fourth inning to deep short. Throws 95 with a sharp slider. How did he have a 7.90 ERA in Minnesota? That's a great take on a slider by Ryan. Led by Kenley Jansen, Dodger bullpen's been nails lately.
Tapper fair. Grandal to Gonzalez. And on 10 pitches, the Nats fail to get the ball out of the bullpen, or rather out of the infield. They'd love one in the bullpen somewhere. 2 2 game. Another one of those things you come to the ballpark and you've never seen before. Utley to Gonzalez and Joe Ross retired. So here we are, an inning and a half later, bottom of the sixth, then the Dodgers box. Star of the night, Corey Seeger, a solo homer, two singles around it. Their other run, Utley, first inning scoring on a wild pitch. Adrian Gonzalez 0 for 2 tonight in the series, 1 for 8. He's bunted successfully against the shift a few times this year. Going to roll that one over to Ryan Zimmerman. To Ross. Bottom of the sixth underway. Further and further we go into the homestand with our next five. Three at Milwaukee. Then the Mets are in for night games. Monday and Tuesday. Nets extra before and after every game. Max Scherzer, Zach Davies, Friday night. Geo, Matt Garza, Saturday afternoon, 4-10. And then the Nats with Strasburg up in the air a bit. We'll decide who throws against Jimmy Nelson Sunday. Remember June 14th last year, Max Scherzer at Milwaukee. One of the most dominant performances I've ever seen. 16 strikeouts, one hit. And it was a blooper over second base that I think Anthony Rendon was playing second. And had a chance for it. It was close, but there wasn't one hard hit ball the whole game. It's and he's thrown some obviously historical games, but that one sticks out to me as maybe the most dominant because there, I mean, Carp, you weren't there. There wasn't one ball barreled up the whole game. It wasn't one of those where it's a one hitter and you get help from your defense. It was put your gloves down, boys. You could have, the, the defense could have played with no glove barehanded, and it would have been the same result. In a hitter's ballpark. Yep. Joe's got a good slider going tonight. A lot of swings and misses. But not necessarily strikeouts. And that's fine. Trying to go at least six for the tenth time this year. That is nastier than the one before it. Trace Thompson is over three. 
And Joe Ross, five Ks on the night. Pretty good slider right here from Joe Ross. And what does Clay think? Pretty stoic. So Jock Peterson next. Strikeout looking and a full count walk. He'll line one to right center. Bryce Harper over and in and out go the Dodgers in the sixth. Nine pitch frame. So Joe Ross is at 90. Bottom of the order coming up. All brought to you by T-Mobile. Noah Syndergaard, the latest Met to leave a ball game. He got a win today, but had to leave after six innings. Elbow sore. Mark Trumbo of the Orioles, 21 home runs. So almost what he did with the D-backs and Mariners last year combined. And the Cleveland Indians are unbeatable in their ballpark. Look at the three to one runs advantage. Cleveland opening up a bit of a lead over Kansas City AL Central. It's all brought to you by T-Mobile. Jonathan Papelbon has been seen on the field throwing. Cespedes left that game with a left wrist injury today for the Mets. And I haven't seen the Terry Collins press conference after but I told it. I was told he wasn't real happy about talking about all the injuries and kind of just was real short and walked out of it. It's a long season. He's usually the best press conference in the league. I love watching him after a game. And by the way, only 90 games left, including tonight. I think this is a change seats moment. Two runs in the second. It's been cricket since. Change beds, maybe, on the East Coast. Could be expensive. Let's go to a different room. Something. Change it up. Usually don't say it with the bottom of the order, because I'm smart like that. But I like the way that Danny's been swinging in Anthony. See how it works. Perfectly placed late breaker. Rendon 0 for 2 tonight in the series 2 for 10. And 0 for 2 against Casey Fien.
This ball not deflectable by Utley and Gonzalez can't reach it either. Adam Libertor. Scoreless seventh inning last night with the base hit by Bryce Harper. Target away, Rendon. Got a pitch up and fouled it straight back. Here's the entire at bat from Mercedes Benz. Everything away. Until ball three. Got a fastball, and Anthony spoils it off to the right. Good at bat by Anthony Rendon. He stayed alive with two strikes. He's aboard to lead off the seventh with Espinosa and Ross the next two. Joe walking to the on deck circle. The one you've been waiting for all night MLB.tv premium the number one live streaming sports service delivers everything you've come to expect and more watch every out of market game live in HD and over 400 supported devices blackout and other restrictions apply visit MLB.tv for details. Danny Espinosa RBI double off the top of the left field wall and a bouncing ball to third but now he's batting left handed on the move Rendon swinging a miss on a pitch up saved the call by Corey Blazer he took a look at it Rondal appears upset the ball tailing a bit off the bag well I like the aggressiveness of this. But show me the replay. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to say anything until I see this. And usually I say wrong anyway, so let's see. Tough to tell there. It was kind of a soft tag, if you will. Hmm. Well, in days past, when the ball beats you like that, you're out automatically, oh, but this is a different time, so we'll see. Hard to believe Anthony's trail foot got to the bag. Before he was tapped. And he got him on the shin before his foot hit the back. Dodgers obviously challenging. This is the best angle, I think. Watch Seeger's glove. If his foot's down, he's safe, but his top foot's up in the air. So he's hooking the bag with his bent knee foot. And what a huge call in this game. He's out. I'm telling you, sometimes more telling than the replay is players' reactions. Just watch the reactions we show you. When guys are livid, the call is usually missed. I'd say nine and a half times out of ten. Strike one it was to Espinosa. He's going to pull a butt with him down the first base line, and that's a base hit. Danny Espinosa, two for three. Now Joe Ross could send him to scoring position. All right. Same bets. Couple of base runners, close call at second. It's working. Stay with it. 
Beautiful bunt by Danny. Name me a guy in baseball that has 13 home runs and as many bunt hits as Danny Espinosa. I guarantee you he's leading that category for whatever that's worth. It's got to be six or seven. 38th career for Danny. He might try to steal here. Show bunt, pull it back, steal second. Who knows? Stay aggressive. Run of the tag. I love it. See how the defense plays Joe Ross here. Squares around early. Pulls the bat back. Ball one. Dusty will switch it up. Don't try to think along with him. Deadens it foul. You don't have to be that fine. You have really good wheels out there at second or at first base. Excuse me, with Danny. Just get it down. He'll get the second. He'll do the hard work for you. When you're sacrificed button late in the game in a tie ball game and everybody knows it, it gets gnarly when the guy on first is not very fast. Then you have to lay down a pretty one. One one he swings away base hit. And Joe Ross is two for three. Runners at first and second. One out Taylor coming up. Eighth hit of the year for Joe. This might sound crazy but I like this even if it's a double play. Why because it's aggressive baseball you're you're not playing scared you're playing to win a game not playing not to lose. I love this brand even with Rendon getting thrown out push the envelope. This game is not made for the timid, it's made for the fearless. And I love what they're doing here in the seventh. Same beds, everybody, don't move. Michael A. Taylor had a bunt base hit against Casey Fien in the fifth inning of that crazy 16 inning game that Nats played with Minnesota. He gets a fastball and swings through it. Michael looking for contact tonight. Julio Urias struck him out three times swinging. Tanner Roark two hits last night. Ross two hits tonight. Back to back. Multi hit games by the pitchers, and for both of them, the first time they've done it. Here's where the Nats need the big hit. That's at the knees, 0 2. It's escaped them for the most part this trip. Danny Espinosa's double in the second was a big hit, so was Joe Rossin's. But I'm talking about the big hit, and this would qualify.
2 2 ball game. 2 8 0 Nats, 2 5 0 Dodgers. Top seven. Taylor strikes out for the fourth time tonight. Number two for Casey Fien. Well, right man, the right spot coming with Jason Worth. A walk, a single, a double tonight. And a guy that knows something about the big hit. So we'll see what happens here. Looking around, surveying the defensive positioning here. Worth 0 for 1 against Fiend. A walk, two hits tonight. Twenty pitches already. Twenty of the 94 that Arias threw. Pretty good series working. On base six times. Now batting around 390 his last 14 games. Now is Monte Grandal going to come out and give a sign of where the throws going should both these guys take off and steal you'd think the throws going to second. That's why he stepped out in front of home and gave a series of signs. I don't think they're running here though. No shot. Late game guy, Pacific time zone. That one right off the end of the barrel, and it's no balls and two strikes. Pass ball up and a foul. So you saw the lefty to Libertor. He's ready if it gets to Harper. Real important for Danny Espinoza to work hard on his secondary lead right here to get a good jump. Pretty good arms in the Dodgers outfield. That's why Chase Utley's hold him on right now. The go ahead run. Anytime you're on second base with two strikes and two outs, you got to work real hard in case the ball's hit sharply to the outfield in this situation. Quig, the shallowest of the three, and he has four assists. Worth gets a fastball and pops it into right center. Yasiel Quig has it, and the Nats. And the broadcasters and the fans still waiting for those big two out hits.
tonight. Slider's been real good, same as it was in San Diego. Jock Peterson didn't like that one, but check out that slider to Puig. I feel like that's the best one of the night. Actually, that one's pretty good, too. Wait, no, that one's the best one. No, wait. That one was pretty good, too. You pick which one's best. I'm confused. Now it's time for Toyota Case for Kids and Washington Area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families make a donation of 37 bucks to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Joe Ross has gone at least six for the tenth time this year. Bottom three for the Dodgers, Grandal, Puig, and then a pinch hitter. So his sixth inning, very quick, on the grounder, strikeout, and then the play by Bryce Harper. Here's Grandal, base hit last time. Foul out to Rendon before that. We're in a shift to Cole and Grandal. Close to where Daniel Murphy would usually be in the leadoff man zone. Right field. So Grandal's now three for his last four. Well, if Nick Lentz had a glove, he could have made that play. Second base umpire. And can Yasiel Puig bunt? Will he bunt? What is Dave Roberts going to do right here? Week a pair of swinging strikeouts. Didn't show bunt on the throw over. Oliver Perez. Chase Utley's at the top of the order. They have nothing but right handed pinch hitters having used Will Venable. Scott Van Slyke is waiting. 0 1 to Puig and the fastball moves him back. Joe's throwing some good heaters to get Puig off the plate tonight. Keep him from leaning over the plate and driving that slider the other way. I like it. Yasiel Puig able to lay off the slider. There's the 29 year old outfielder, Scott Van Slyke. So he doubles up and throws a dandy. Counts even. But Nissan will track it. Watch the front shoulder. That's a pull swing. So body going one way, pitch going the other way. It's not going to work until he decides to hit something to the right side.
Puig hammers one to left. Worth playing very deep, and the ball falls in front of him. Dodgers have their first two aboard here in the seventh. That's one of the few sliders that Joe Ross has thrown tonight that stayed up. And we just showed you a highlight package with every one of those things just diving and darting down and away. Maybe fatigue setting in for Joe, but that one just stayed up out over the plate. If it broke more, he would have had Puig, but it stayed there. And Dodgers in business here at the bottom of the seventh. And they've called back Andy Van Schlyke. They're going to go with A.J. Ellis, their backup catcher, to bunt here, it appears. Yeah, he's a good bunter. Yeah, so Vance Lack will go to second and run for Yasmani Grandal because they're going to bring in their backup catcher anyway. Be Joe Ross's last hitter. AJ Ellis hasn't faced him before. He took a stab at that low pitch in that strike one. You see him jump up into the front of the box as Joe Ross was in his delivery. If you're a butter, keep your head still. It's kind of hard to. When you're moving around like that, and maybe a little nervous. I'll tell you what, some of the most nerve wracking pinch hits I ever had were bunting. That's well done. Ross with the bare hand to Murphy, 1 4. Top of the order coming up. Here comes Dusty. Chase Utley coming up. Oliver Perez ready. Joe's not going to make it through seven for the sixth time this year, but he gives the Nats a strong effort. Seven hits so far, two runs. One out, seventh inning. Lefty, lefty coming up. Party of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Joe Ross, six and a third. Right now, Dave Roberts pulling a lot of levers over there in that third base dugout. He's going to use most of his bench in this inning. More on that in a moment as Oliver Perez comes in, and he won't be facing 
Jay Sudley. They'll go to the right hander, Kike Hernandez. Ali Perez, fastball 92, slider 79 slash 80. Hernandez a contact guy. Dave Roberts emptying out his bench here in the bottom of the seventh, going for the W. Pinch hitter, five for 25 with a home run this year. Perez gets it in there. I'll tell you what, I'm watching Vance like at third base. I don't know if they're going contact play right here. Meaning if the ball's on the ground, he's going. He doesn't have a very big lead. He's not getting off the base very far. If it is on the ground and they go contact, they have a great chance of getting him at the plate. Big swing by Hernandez. Perez and now that guy's up. Yeah, Seeger. Lefty lefty matchup, right handed Turner on deck. Oliver Perez got him to fly out to left two nights ago. He's got that big breaking ball going, strike one. Seager hit a respectable 250 against left handers this year. Moss. Nasty slider. And Seeger a fly ball to center for Michael A. Taylor. Oliver Perez does yeoman work against Hernandez and Seeger. Dodgers have left six. So have the Nats. And it's a 2 2 into the eighth.
Scully entering his last year as Dodgers broadcaster. We have talked often about how much we love spending time with Vin and chatting with him. Dusty Baker and Bryce Harper both taking time out of their afternoons today to head up to the broadcast booth to talk with Vinny, to take pictures with him, to share stories. Dusty told a story the other day about how when he was growing up, his mom took him to an opera and he snuck in a transistor radio and was listening to Vin Scully broadcast a game during the opera and his, he was smiling and his mom thought he loved the opera. Bryce talking about how much he loved having Vin uh, broadcast his major league debut and I talked to Clint Robinson who played for the Dodgers who was just amazed at how kind Vin Scully was to him despite being one of the last guys on the roster remembered stories about him told stories on the air was just so kind and generous to him so everybody guys loving spending time with Vin and us getting a chance to be around him. Bryce Harper top of the eighth. Adam Libertor. And Harper looking for his first base hit tonight 0 for 3 32nd appearance and a great ERA. 29 years of age. 25 K's in 23 innings. Fastball misses inside. It might be the last time we ever see Vin. So we all went over there today got some pictures with him and. Last time we see him at the ballpark. Unless it's in October. So A.J. Ellison to catch Kike Hernandez at second. When he started. Harry S. Truman was the president. That's incredible. Twelve administrations. Have listened to Vince Scully call him the Dodgers. Started with with the great Red Barber in Brooklyn. Harper right into the shift. That was 5 3 on a grounder to the second base position. I'm a turner over there. Apparently, Ben was saying how much Danny Espinosa looked like me tonight, and I've never had my phone blow up as much just to show you the influence that Ben Scully has on a broadcast. He is the most popular Dodger without a doubt. And justifiably so. Great pictures all over the internet of Dusty Baker hugging Vince Scully tonight before the game up in the booth. Libertor to Murphy for a strike. Yeah, we're going right from the guy known. To a lot of people, he is the Dodgers. Yep. To a gentleman in Milwaukee, Bob Euchre. To a lot of people, he is the Brewers. Yep. Great broadcaster trip. And a lot of those text messages and tweets I got from people that saying that he said that about Danny and I are Nats fans. So we'll let you cheat on us tonight. That's fine. You can do that with Vince Miller. We don't mind. Some was from family too. So. <laughs> Low two and one. Murphy up the middle, not hit that hard. Going away from first. That's a fantastic play by Kike Hernandez. Two outs. Chase Utley doesn't make this play. No offense to Chase Utley, but going away from it like that, the range that Hernandez showed and the arm strength thrown across his body, Kike known for his defense. Wherever you put him, he's going to make the play. He plays a wonderful shortstop as well. And you see him stealing a hit from Daniel Murphy. Nice play. So two thirds of an inning on a couple of ground balls by Adam Libertor further into the Dodger bullpen tie game eighth inning.
Lawn Masson brought to you by American Standard Heating and Air. It's their all-star sales event. With up to $1,100 in instant rebates or 0% APR for 36 months. And by your local Kia dealers. Visit dckiadealers.com to learn more. Or visit the air control tower to try to get a hold of what we're looking at right now. That's not in L.A. It would be gridlock if it was. That's midnight traffic. Yeah. Here's Pedro Baez, 28-year-old right-hander. First appearance of the series, 32 games. 327 ERA, 38 Ks, 33 innings. The arms just keep on coming from the Dodgers. Wilson Ramos 0 for 1 career against him. Bases empty, two outs, top of the eighth. Take by Wilson right there. It just missed. Tough to lay off these these borderline pitches. Look out. See AJ Ellis looking out there like seriously, dude? You see that look the catcher gave the pitcher? Ramos 0 for 3 tonight. In the series, 2 for 11. Fastball up to the screen, it goes. Felipe Rivero. They have Turner, Gonzalez, and Thompson coming up. Bottom eight. That guy's got to be an all star. Has to be. 106 to 108 exit speed. 421. Ryan Zimmerman next. He gets a fastball up and that. Almost takes out Jeff Nelson. Wilson's a good home run watcher, dude, too, by the way. He can check out his work with the best of them. I like watching Wilson hit taters. Especially in a tie ball game this late. How clutch was that? I've seen a lot of games here. Halfway up the bleachers during batting practice, nah, eh, it's a good shot. Halfway up the bleachers late at night when it's cool like that is a bomb. 0 oh 2 to Ryan Zimmerman. I believe Wilson's got three hits in the series and they're all in his last at bat. None bigger than that one. Seems like he's had a few salvages, but that was huge. Yeah, last night double to go one for four. Monday night, base hit third time up to go one for four. None as big 
or as long as that. Zimmerman two for three tonight. Ryan 0 for one against Baez. So the Nats are at 99 on the home run count. Last time Wilson was healthy. Last year. Problem in 14 but he had 15 homers last year and he's gonna go way beyond that. Zimmerman strikes out. Wilson Ramos goes. Tremendously deep in the ballpark like Dodger Stadium. So to the bottom of the eighth, the Nets bullpen now has to go through the heart of the order, but they're on top. But the story was the bottom of the seventh, and Oliver Perez coming on with second and third. One out, tie ball game. Kike Hernandez, a pitch hitter. Thanks for coming. Nasty curveball. And Corey Seeger, who is three for three with a home run, flies out to center field. Joe Ross is fired up. Way to go, Ollie. Leaving my runs out there, keeping us in the ball game. Nicely, nicely done by Oliver Perez. And now it's Felipe Rivero's turn. 36th appearance. And the repertoire. A fastball mid 90s slider changeup. You see the ERA super high. The average against super low. And the Nats need Felipe Rivero to get back on track right here, right now. Just no better time. Felipe makes his first appearance of the series. Roughed up in San Diego, back at it tonight, trying to preserve what would be a very important win heading to the Midwest, eventually heading home. Turner 0 for 3 tonight in the series, 2 for 11. And a fastball, 95, in the zone, up, strike one. By the way, Oliver Perez, six pitches. Every one of them a strike and quality strikes. Turner really jamming that plate. Pretty good pitch. I mean, you could almost hit him and it would be a strike. And that was such a pitch. 96, good velo. 
velocity. There's the changeup, turned it over two and one. Slow down. There you go. Step off the mound, slow the game down. Maybe even the delivery a little bit. Harness that adrenaline, get in that strike zone. Got to make a quality pitch here, though, not just a strike. In the air, right center. Taylor is there, has it. That swing. The way that ball carried gives you a good idea how far Wilson Ramos First hit his ball because Justin Turner Adrian hit Gonzalez. that right on the nose. 3 1 pitch. I mean, he got that. But this is how Dodger Stadium plays when it cools down late at night. The air gets damp, the ball goes nowhere. And you see the frustration by Turner. He knows he got it. Here's Gonzalez, 0 for 3. 1 for 2 career against Felipe. Fair ball. Zimmerman to the bag himself. Two down. Put all hookies and wahoos if you're still up. Wednesday, June 29th is our second annual college rivalry day. The purchase of a special ticket. All kinds of pregame activities. You get a reusable acrylic cup in your school's colors. Why wouldn't they be? Then cheer on the Nats as they take on the Mets at 7.05. Visit nationals.com slash college rivalry day for tickets. Trace Thompson. Dusty going four out save here with his right hander. Who we got coming in here? Well, it's a double switch. We know Clint Robinson is in. So Zimmerman, the last main to bat, and there is Kelly. So Kelly has Thompson, Peterson, pitcher spot, and Puig way before this one's over. Matches up Max Scherzer against the Milwaukee Brewers. That'll be Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Max is 8 and 4. Right hander Zach Davies, 5 and 3. 
3.62 for the Brewers. That'll get the weekend underway. Geo goes Saturday, waiting to see who will go on Sunday, Steven Strasburg's regular turn. So here's Sean Kelly, four outs to get. First of that will be Trace Thompson, who faces him for the first time. Kelly's 30th appearance, 245 ERA. 35 Ks in 26 innings. Yeah, fastball for Seamer goes low to mid 90s. Slider's been good as well, and he's a guy that keeps that fastball away from right handers. You look at Flint Robinson in the game at first. Nice job, Felipe Rivero, by the way. I honestly think that Justin Turner fly ball to center is why Dusty Baker came in and is going with Sean Kelly right here for the four out save. That scared him into bringing Kelly into the game, I believe. That ball out of play to the right side. Kelly looks to paint the outside edge and he thought he might have gotten that one to come back. A little lean going to his dugout. Slider good take by the youngster Thompson. Got him up a bit. It just got to the outside edge. Rivero and Kelly combined for three crucial outs. And now Sean's got some more work to do. But the Nets go into the ninth on top. 3-2. He'll take it, but we've been talking about the strike zones. Big last night with Doug Eddings. Jeff Nelson has picked up right where Doug Eddings left off. Look where that pitch was for strike three. Good frame by Ramos to pull it back in there and present it. But we've seen some really, really questionable calls tonight for both sides. Top of the ninth inning. Pedro Baez stays in. Anthony Rendon leads off against him. Rendon 0 for 2 career against the right hander. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I think with all the data that players have today, and there's so much on umpires, and plus, you know, a player doesn't forget if a guy has a big zone. You'll hear guys talking in the clubhouse all the time, oh, so and so is behind the plate tonight, you got to swing it. But now there's data on umpires, too, so you really go into a ball game as a hitter with a preconceived notion about an umpire strike zone, and then when that equals what you thought was going to happen, then you see the guys getting mad nowadays because. You never had that back in the day. You didn't have a spray chart with an umpire strike zone to look at as part of your scout report. You just had to go by memory of what the umpire had. So if your name's not Daniel Murphy, is what you're doing against a certain pitcher and what you're doing in front of a certain umpire maybe a little too much to process? I know that guy can do it. No, I don't think so. It, it doesn't consume your pregame activities. You're not going up there going, okay, well, this guy is a high zone. I got to swing a high pitch. It's just good knowledge to have when you get into a two strike count. Where do I have to protect with two strikes? I'm not getting out of my game plan before two strikes. You have to come in my zone, regardless of an umpire strike zone. But now, if I do get to two strikes and I'm not standing on second base with a double, where do I have to protect? And that's where the data comes in so handy for these guys nowadays. I don't imagine everybody looks at it. Chris Heisey get loose. Lynn Robinson do up third after the double switch. Rendon gets a pitch he can drive to left turned on it and Anthony Rendon last two at bats a walk and now a base hit a hard hit ball to center a second time up too so pretty nice night for Anthony Rendon a one for three with two hard hit baseballs Byron Kerr Ray Knight and that's extra post game when this one's over it is presented by W B Mason. Last time up, Danny Espinoza, his sixth bunt base hit of the year. So he's working on a two for three night. And Danny suddenly, after an 0 for Monday evening in this series, is four for nine, two RBIs on base five times. Turner on the grass at third. Rendon, pretty good lead. Chris Hatcher, the right hander. And his twin brother behind him. Rendon holding. Espinosa fouls it. So the Mets won today. Marlins won. It's a big game. It's Dusty Baker bobblehead night for crying out loud. Espinosa hits one way up. It'll come down somewhere to the left of the second base bag. Caught by Seeger. One out. And now we get to see Clint Robinson. First at bat of the series. 
Drew has not had an AB here at Dodger Stadium. Chris Isy has had one. Two homers, 11 RBIs, hitting 224. Robinson drives one the other way. First and second, one out, top of the order coming up. Nicely done, Clint Robinson. Not easy. You sit around for uh, what three hours and 19 minutes or so, and then come up first fastball you get, stroke it into left. Nicely done. Beautiful swing by Clint Robinson. Michael A. Taylor looking for some contact right here. He could salvage a night with a base hit. Taylor facing Baez first time. So that 18 game streak as a starter on the line here. And a whole lot more online in terms of adding a run or two. Great speed at second and Rendon. Outfield pretty deep. Baez has faced five batters and three have hit safely. Get you a good one, give it a ride. Why not? Now Taylor trying to avoid striking out swinging for the fifth straight time tonight. I don't know if he's fouled the ball off tonight. It just seems to me that he's swung and missed every single time and right now would be a nice time to put one in play and get you a hit in an RBI. But I'm not recalling a foul ball in the bunch. Two two now with one out. And it'll be up to Jason Worth here at the top of the night. Jason Worth. Worth over two career against Baez. That's a rough night for Michael Taylor. Be softened if his ball club wins a game.
Jason Worth tonight a walk a single a double a fly ball to right. Robinson able to get a huge lead at first in case Jason would find a gap or a corner. And that's at the knees for a strike, 98. Until somebody hits one. Pretty lively fastball, 98, 97. Three two game, three eleven and O Nationals, two seven O Dodgers, six seven eight for LA, do up bottom of this inning. Kind of creeping off second base, trying to get a real big secondary. And Baez looked back, stepped off. He has a very deliberate pace, to say the least. He's going to walk off the mound halfway back to second base, rub up the ball. Worth in this series, four now five out of twelve, one base six times. And that's well inside. So Jason Worth now. 25 pitches and four at bats. And five more this time around. Jason right there that one was close 98 miles an hour low clearly way low and close Rendon at second Robinson at first they'll be moving on the 303 2 pitch coming sometime tonight. Right at Vin. 
He must be okay. Everybody <laughs> wants him to throw the ball to him. That's scary. Please, Jason, do not take out Vince Scully. Runners on the move and Worth stays alive. Good battle going on. And you all know what happens when this guy starts falling pitch after pitch away. Yep. Seen this act before. It just usually happens a little bit quicker. Yeah, he's usually fouled off 11 or 12 <laughs> by now. <laughs> this has to be the slowest tempo I've seen from a reliever all season. My goodness. Kind of hoping that foul ball got me. And I thought Jesus Colome <laughs> for the Nats was <laughs> slow years ago. 3 2 again. Worth well hit right field corner to the right end foul of the pole. He was watching Jason run to first base, had his bat in the hand the whole way. I was waiting for the flip. I was going by what he did because we can't tell if it's going to be fair or foul. That pole kind of wraps around there, and he's going to tell you. You see the bat flip, it's a homer. If he holds on to it, it's foul. Wasn't really close, but we couldn't tell from here. Pretty so good. pitch number 10 coming. Pretty good fight going on. Runners moving again. Worth pulls it foul. Epic battle. Checking his bat, make sure it didn't crack. Rendon and Robinson are worn out. Bryce Harper's been on deck for about seven minutes. Three two Nats top of the ninth inning two on two out. He walked him. Fantastic at bat by Jason Worth. Baez asking for an appeal on a pitch that was way outside. And here comes Dave Roberts. He's got a lefty ready with Bryce Harper coming in. Their other lefty in the bullpen is J.P. Howell. So Harper a chance to bust the ninth inning and this ball game wide open.
Buffalo's homer. It's a difference in this game as it stands right now. It's 12th of the year. Remember, he had a big one into the Nats bullpen to break a tie against the Cubs. So the Buffalo likes to break ties with homers. A couple of horns up. Jose Lobatone taking off the lid. Good stuff from the Buffalo. Well, as mentioned, the other lefty they have is J.P. Howell, but they're not calling on him. It's going to be Chris Hatcher. The right-hander, former Marlin, Nats know him pretty well. 27 ball games, 29 innings, 29 strikeouts, but he has walked 17. So he's got to come out throwing strikes to a dangerous hitter in Bryce Harper. We saw the reverse splits, right? He's hitting over 300, lefty's hitting just 111. So in essence, he is a lefty, and that's why Dave Roberts made the move. Bryce first to bat against him. And Harper saw that breaking ball sitting up. Yeah, pretty good fastball, 96. Slider to go with it. He'll cut the fastball. I think that's what you just saw. The change up is the out pitch. Great bases loaded numbers for Bryce. 0 for 4 tonight in the series. 3 for 13. Opposite field homer last night. Counts even. Third base Rendon led this inning off with a base hit. Flint Robinson one out later. Single to left. And then an out later after that. Jason Worth. A marathon walk. Challenge eater on the inner half, 97. Breaking ball tapped right side. Races on to the bag. And holding on after the Gonzalez tapper, or the Harper tapper, and a throw by Gonzalez is Hatcher. So we're going bottom nine. Six, seven, eight. The Nats trying to win one in LA. Sean Kelly, couple of saves this year. First of all, taking care of the Cubs. That was a no fooling around, all business. I'm coming right at you, save. So, 
First game against the Cubs and then on to San Diego where Kelly would get his second 12 pitches seven strikes couple of outs in the night in an 8-5 Nets win. They would win one more game on this trip. And four in a row on the other side before tonight. So here goes Sean Kelly against Jock Peterson who's 0 for 3 against him with a base on balls. Tell you what, Jeff Nelson is hunting strikes, and I mean hunting. Ball game exactly three and a half hours old as we go bottom nine. Peterson 0 for 2 with the base on balls. Jack Peterson must have been thinking slider right there in a 1 1 count. Two two with nobody out throws him a strike and a swing and a miss three batters well actually two to begin Kelly's night both strikeouts one out slider that worked like a changeup at 84 kind of spun in there a little late break Peterson geared up for the fastball way out in front of the slider trying to tie this game up with a mighty two strike hack. Last remaining Dodger position player Howie Kendrick and he has seen Sean Kelly 12 times two for ten a homer five RBIs four K's two walks and he's up there hacking. Well, this is a good matchup and for Kendrick because he hits the ball to right center field and Sean Kelly throws everything away. Taylor shaded that way a bit from center. Well, you see the difference in Sean Kelly's tempo compared to Baez's. I mean, it, this just screams, I'm coming after you. And even if you have a pitcher that throws almost 100 like Baez and he's taking his time, that just tells me as a player standing behind him that he doesn't have confidence in his stuff. The mound presence and body language, exact opposites of two guys that throw really hard. 1 2 pitch, sails upstairs. Target low and away. Kelly gets the breaking ball over the plate and the tying runs on base. With Howie Kendrick's second pitch hit this year. Yasiel Puig, this is the big one right now. Ellis after him, the catcher. And Puig is one for three career against him. Right in there with 93. Puig one for three tonight. In the series, two for six. Whatever you throw right here, just keep it down. Pace hit. And Michael A. Taylor misses the ball. 
The game is tied. Puig heading for third. He's going to be held. He runs through the stop sign, and the game is over. Murphy never got off a throw. The Dodgers win it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And Danny Espinosa almost gets this ball. It gets by him. You see the reaction. Kelly thinks it's a double play and the ball game's over. Michael Taylor, for some reason, charges that out of control. There's no way how he Kendrick was going to go to third base on this. And a lot like his night at the plate, he just missed it. That can't happen. It's a single and a three base error that brings in the tying and winning runs for the Dodgers. And Puig ran right through Chris Woodward's stop sign. And then Daniel Murphy couldn't get a handle or whatever happened. The throw to home never took place, and the Dodgers walk off the Nats in a shocker. I mean, that's a tough one. They don't get any harder than that. It's a quiet clubhouse for a long time. The Nats are swept. It's a two and five road trip with three coming up in Cincinnati. A lot of crazy things happening in this one. The Dodgers win it four to three. And in frustrating fashion, the Nationals.